Teardown Titan Sandy Monroe has been looking at Tesla for years, but he's been looking at all the auto manufacturers for decades, and this is what he does. So I had a chance to chat with him, get some insights, talk a little bit about 4680, talk about other batteries, talk about other companies, and talk about what makes Cybertruck so special. Uh, let's get into a little bit of that, uh, and then there will be a part two coming up in a few days. Let's check it out. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Oh, 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 oh. Special thanks to Joa for sponsoring this video. Joa offers a variety of high quality accessories for your Tesla, like sunshades, phone mounts, and floor mounts. Every one of the Joa accessories I got when I first became a Tesla owner are still in my car, in use to this very day. Whether it's for your Model Y or Cybertruck or anything in between, they got you covered. For a limited time, you can get 10% off your purchase from Joa with coupon code ASA10. And I'll get a small commission too, which helps out the channel, so thanks. All right, so it was very cool seeing you at the uh, big event in Muskegon. Wonderful, yeah. as always. Okay. Yeah, thank you for, for joining us it's for good that. good to see you, yeah. Yeah. So you've looked at the 4680. You've seen the old one. The new one that's just come out is still being yeah. analyzed. Yeah. Uh, and you've, you know, the, the voltage, you know, the, how many of them there are. Is it possible we could see uh, more capacity from the existing battery packs maybe unlocked via over the air update? Hmm. Over the OTA? No, I don't think so. I, I believe that uh, what they could do is make, uh, uh, make things a little more efficient or effective by modifying the, uh, the different uh, electronic modules, but the batteries themselves, they are what they are. But anyway, while I'm on that, um, I don't know if you've seen this, but I got something special for you. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here's a 4680 battery. Okay. Yes, sir. Oop, let me go here. There we go. Mm -hmm. So 46, uh, 46 is the diameter. 80s the length and this has been my favorite battery and this is a brand spanking new one so this is a little lighter um got a little more power because the skin is uh is uh thinner and here you go and this was my favorite not anymore now okay. i'm going to show you how fickle i am and i've always been against uh um i've always been against um pouches but not mm -hmm. anymore this okay. oop, let me bring it back here this is the new pouch from saku so this pouch gives me the same voltage as that oh. and the same power as this but that oops this is now this size so when you look at it, you'll see the two of them here. Uh, mm -hmm. They look fine that way, but then you turn them this way, oops, this way, and you can see that they're quite a bit different, but they are giving off the same amount of, of, of voltage. And the big thing is, as you can see, there is no copper and no aluminum, and it's wicked thin. So the new thing from Saku is uh, my new favorite. Uh, uh, and that's, I just, I just found out about this last week, or at least I announced it last week. So uh, not too many people have seen it yet. So that looks a whole lot cheaper to manufacture too. It's about, um, ultimately it'll be about seven to 8% cheaper, but we don't have is the, how much cheaper it'll be to, assemble and the case itself will be quite a bit less expensive. So those, uh, those factors, um, we didn't have a chance to look at, but from a raw material standpoint, it's about 7%. And then we have to start looking at, we said, we have to start looking at, you know, what does this case look like? I mean, what's it, how's it going to be made? Probably be made out of plastic and we can shove them in from the top. We're just uh, dinking around with that right now. But um, because they're square and because they don't, they don't uh, um, give off a lot of heat and stuff like that, actually, you can cut them in half, and they still have the same voltage. They don't spark. They don't blow up. They don't do anything. So I'm really excited about that. So there you go. 
I know what you asked, <laughs> but you got something else. So there you are. Yeah. That's what I mean. That's what we're here. That's why we bring you on. If I wanted to guess myself, I would. Uh, uh, I had a Cybertruck question. How do they mitigate galvanic corrosion between the stainless and the aluminum? They have a glue. They have an adhesive. Um, on airplanes, um, they use something called alidine, um, which is basically just uh, green crap that you put on, and it it, uh, it acts as an insulating bond. But the cyber truck is glued and then mechanically fastened. So the glue um, is special, where we had one very small drop that we've sent out for a chemical analysis. And um, we went everywhere trying to find another little drop and we couldn't, through the whole body, we couldn't find another one. So we're waiting uh, to get that back and then we'll know, we already know that it's an insulator and we know it's bugger to get off. So that stuff sticks, it really does. It's very, very tough to get off, but that's, that's how you get rid of galvanic action. So other battery manufacturers have uh, immediately started looking to make 4680s right after Tesla's announcement. And yeah. a number of them have stepped back from their timelines, their ambitions. Uh, I tried to ask this of a Tesla battery employee and was not permitted an answer. Is there something particularly vexing about the 4680 form factor that would make it harder to manufacture? Okay, so um, the uh, the scrap rate um, uh, for a lot of the others is quite high. Uh, Tesla has um, figured out how to use a dry cell process, and that dry cell process um, gives them a higher yield. Uh, everybody else thought, oh, well, we'll just squeeze it together. Well, it don't work that way. And so consequently, they're still using a wet process. But Tesla's, uh, Tesla's 4680 battery line is quite a bit shorter than, um, it's quite a bit shorter than everybody else's. Yeah, they got rid of 30% of their line by getting rid of the fact that they got to get rid of the fumes and the nasty chemicals that, um, you, you, you basically wind up with too much and then you've got to suck it away. So Tesla's been doing this a long time and they figured out how to uh, first off reduce the amount that they use, then finally eliminate it. And the other guys are going to have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, just shortening the line is one thing, but getting rid of those chemicals in the air has got to be a benefit uh, for the people yeah. who work there. And, right. Well, and everything everything's done in chambers. So... Uh, the, the, the people on the assembly line or in that area, in that proximity, they don't have a problem. It's just that now I've got to suck that stuff out and, and I've got to, it. and that's the third that they got rid of because there's no, they don't use any electrolytes. They don't use any, um, sticking agents as it were. So mm -hmm. their line is quite a bit shorter. What kind of changes do you expect to see in the next iteration of the Cybertruck, even even whether it's uh, short term in terms of rolling changes or bigger changes? Um, uh, there's a couple of little things that um, that uh, that we've seen that I'm sure they're going to correct um, shortly. But at the end of the day, they don't. Um, Tesla doesn't doesn't isn't going to make something that's going to be obvious to the general public. That won't be happening. They'll uh, they'll be doing things that are uh, invisible to the ultimate customer. I think there'll there'll be a ton of that stuff, but but outside uh, the look and stuff like that, I don't think so. So do you do you think they will? Uh make any of the panels thinner. I know with flat panels, a risk you um, run if you go too thin is that they'll oscillate. Yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch the panels currently. Um, right now, uh, if you're going faster than you should, um, uh, they, they don't they don't vibrate, they don't they don't wrinkle, they don't hum. If they make them thinner, then a lot of other bad things can start to happen. So I think they'll probably leave them exactly the same size they are right now, just to make it so that they don't, they don't wind up with any quality issues. And do you see any obvious paths to weight reduction apart from 
energy density improvement in the batteries? Um, I can tell you that a lot of the stuff looks over designed to me. Um, uh, maybe they could uh, get away with uh, thinner castings, the thinner walled castings. Um, I think that that's a possibility. There are some areas that uh, we looked at as far as the suspension and whatnot, but I don't know what their requirements are. And we don't have the capability for doing uh, the off-road testing that would probably tell us where we could uh, we could do um, some weight reduction, uh, you know, ACTS, I guess, A-C-T-S, ACTS, yeah. Andy, that was awesome. I appreciate you coming on and sharing with us all, all that you know. Uh, we're going to make a part two of this here in a couple days where we'll discuss some other things, uh, weight savings on castings, who's using castings, which manufacturers are on the wrong and right path. There's a whole lot there to consider. Uh, so uh, I want to thank you. Uh, everybody in the comments, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? You know, like, subscribe, do the usual. Uh, let's see if you can, uh, you know, uh, maybe subscribe. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's a lot of fun and I don't charge for it. It's just what we do. Uh, everybody else, uh, you know, uh, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on part two.